grace and mercy and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who has power. We've discussed that. We reflected on that. Um, last week was um, Independence Weekend, so um, and I was gone. So we interrupted this four-part series on the power of Jesus. And today uh, we learned, first two Sundays, we learned the power of Jesus over nature. Remember that? A storm, peace be still. It's power over nature. That's a lot of power. The second was Jesus' uh, power over spiritual forces. The man had a demon possession, and um, Jesus said, get out. And he found a new home for them in those pigs. And the man was normal and clothed and in his right mind. That's a lot of power. That's a lot of power. And today, uh, number three, is the power over disease. I had a, I had a introduction all written, and then all this garbage in American society happened again over the week. Uh, Jane called me up. Um, she stayed home after we got back from Kansas. And the Dallas thing I'm talking about now. And she said, have you heard about the shooting? And I said, what shooting? We've been having him for 15 years, which is true, which makes, depresses me and you. And she told me the one in Dallas, da, 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 da. I was being cynical when I answered. Of course, I had heard about it. <coughs> so my introduction is kind of switching from, um, disease in the narrow sense. Oh, I have a stomach ache. Oh, I have kidney stones. Oh, I have glaucoma. Oh, I got hurt in football. And that kind of disease. Jesus has power over those. Our text tells us that. We'll get to that in a moment. But then I started thinking because of the circumstances of the week, we, there's a lot of different kind of sickness out there. Not just our own aches and pains but societal aches and pains and I started thinking about the text can it apply t to those kinds of diseases mm, violence and racism that's what I hear about I listen to the experts too and they say there's this is about racism and that's a disease and that's a disease. Can Jesus cure that disease? The text tells us he has power over disease. So let's go to the text real quickly. And Jesus uh, is busy in his ministry. He's on his way uh, to a man's house, uh, requested that he visit his little daughter, this man's house, who approaches Jesus who is sick, has a disease, and is dying. I assume she has a disease, she's dying, so something's wrong. And Jesus is on his way, and uh, like a magnet, Jesus tracks all, attracts all kinds of people. A good attraction, because they see and hear and witness and experience the wonderful power that Jesus has. Now, you can be powerful, but be no good. You can have a lot of power, but hurt people. God's not like that. God has a lot of power. There is nothing more powerful than the Lord, our almighty God. But he, he's, a, but he's a, a compassionate, it's a compassionate power. It's a compassionate power. And so when God extends his power or we tap his power, it's for good results, not for evil results. So we don't have to be scared of his power. It's for your good and for mine. And the lady teaches that, and so does this man. He invites Jesus. He begs Jesus to come to his house. And a lot of people are following him because Jesus has done some wonderful things with his power. He healed the man possessed by a demon. He stilled the storm. This is all in chapter 8. You know by now there's four miracles in a row. One, two, three, four. All about his power. And uh, on his way to a specific need is an interruption. I heard a long time ago that the work of a minister is dealing with interruptions. 
I'm not real good at that. Maybe you witnessed that. But it'll be Monday morning, Tuesday morning, and I want to get a head start on my sermon. Okay, so I'm real to myself, da, da, da. And the phone rings. Or the secretary comes into the office. Or one of you stops by. And it's interruption. I've got this sermon. I'm going to make it really good. I'm starting early and getting it good. And there's an interruption. And it's God's hand. I've learned. I don't say I like it yet, but it's God's hand saying, Gary, this is your ministry right now. It's what happened to Jesus. Because you guys never have interruptions. You have all your interruptions. All that. You might look at it that way yourself, your work. Your interruptions are your work. Or the kids, when you're raising your kids. You know, you wanted to get the laundry done. Oh, mommy, come play tea with me or something like that. That's your work. That's your work. So it's interrupted. And it's interrupted by a sick lady. A lady with a disease. I don't have to ponder over this, but we need to take a look at a few of the details. A lady who um, is not in the crowd, right? I'll take that back. Uh, she's not in the original crowd. The background of this lady, she had been sick, chronically sick, which is very frustrating and depressing. I think she was on the um, threshold of despair because she had gone to the doctors and she had spent all of her money and she didn't get better. And in the Gospel of Mark, which has this account, it says she actually got worse. Now, if that isn't depressing for someone who has a sickness, Maybe it's happened to you, and you don't know where to turn. And then the text says she heard about Jesus. I don't think she was in the crowd right away. She heard about Jesus. Someone told her that this Jesus of Nazareth, a sort of prophet guy, an itinerant preacher, was healing people, and her ears picked up, and she got interested. I wonder who she heard it from. I wonder if people hear from us Lutherans that Jesus has power for their lives. And Jesus can heal all kinds of sicknesses, physical and relational and addictional hmm, and spiritual sicknesses. There's a little lesson, a big lesson for us to learn about that. She heard from someone else about Jesus and his compassion and his ability to do something about that. I would like to see not just Grace Church, but all Lutheran churches be very intentional about telling people, we might not get him here on our telling, not right away, but telling people about Jesus and the qualities which I just mentioned, that he cares, that he's compassionate, that he understands, that he saves, that he heals, that he reverses despair into hope. I think Pastor Grieb now would, will lead you in that direction. And after she heard, she said, I think I'll go see Jesus. I don't think she's that careful here about it. She goes, I'm going to go see Jesus. I've tried everything else, and I'm going to go see Jesus. So she came. So she came. So she heard. She came. And then she fought the crowds. She fought the crowd. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. He wasn't sitting on a mountain where he's highly visible. He wasn't sitting in a boat where he's also highly visible. He was in a crowd, and she fought the crowds, but she didn't let that stop her. She persevered, persevered. We just sang the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, Take It to the Lord in Prayer. How persevering are we in our prayers? You have a sickness? You ask the pastor to pray for you. You say a prayer to yourself. How bad do you want it? Jesus can help. We pray for our congregation. We're a little dismayed. We wring our hands that the pews are kind of empty and attendance is down and money is scarce and uh, worship isn't uh, so inspiring because it's a thin crowd and things like that. Do you fight the crowds? Do I fight the crowds? And make sure we get to Jesus. Our country right now, 
this is kind of where th the sermon changes or apply application um, is in a mess. Violence every week, every day. I'm not proud of my country anymore. How bad do I want my beloved country to get on the right track? Do I fight the crowds? Do I go to the Lord in prayer? Do I schedule vigils for God's people to come together and pray for our country? I don't do that. That's an indictment on me. The power of healing is available in the narrow sense and in a social sense and in a spiritual sense, but we don't tap it. When Jesus died on the cross, he did everything necessary to heal you of your sins. Jesus, the Son of God, has the power to heal you and our country of our illnesses. So then when the woman fights the crowds, she hears, she confesses, she fights the crowds, and she gets to Jesus, and she just touches his hem. They call it fringe in our translation, the fringe of his clothes. She's, she has enough faith to say, if I'm just in his orbit, he will heal me. Doesn't even touch Jesus. She touches his clothes. I don't even get close to his clothes sometimes. I'm trying to solve my own problems. Huh? I'm doubtful that Jesus has the power to solve the problems of a minister. You know, I'm doubt that J Jesus has the, prob the, the power to resolve the problems of the church at large. We're on the sidelines now. You know that to restore that where the ch spiritual life is the center of social life in the United States. I don't even touch it, but she did. She got that, that close. She touched the fringe of his clothes and the power was available. It just transferred from Jesus to the sick lady and her chronic illness was taken care of immediately, immediately. She knew within her that she was well in her that she was well. So this, this is what I want you to learn before we close, that there's power from Jesus for what ails you. And a disease can be, I've kind of implied that could be a rocky relationship. Let's say the marriage isn't going very good. The marriage isn't going very good. Go to Jesus and say, the marriage is a mess. I can hardly stand to live with the guy. He can hardly stand to live with me. I don't know what to do. Do What a friend we have in Jesus. Take it to the Lord in prayer and persevere. How bad do you want it? Do you fight the crowds or do you give up? On this hand is the power and over here is accessing the power. You have to go and get it. That's what we're weak at. That's what we're weak at. So it's a wonderful benefit that all we have to do is access the power and touch his garment. And touch his garment. So anyway, it gets even more complicated. Jesus felt the healing power exit from him. And uh, who touched me? And the disciples are like bewildered. They said, what a question, Lord. It's like, look at all these people around you. What do you mean who touched you? Everybody's touching you. But this was a special touch, a touch of faith, a touch of faith. She came not to just rub elbows with Jesus. She came because he has the power and the compassion to make life better. And after, sh as the text says, when she found out she could not be concealed, they found her out, she confessed, trembling and the Lord doesn't beat her up he calls her daughter daughter sometimes he calls the ladies woman but here he calls her daughter what's a daughter you are family you are family because of your faith and then she gives he gives her another uh, dose of healing go in peace go in peace you're going to come to communion again this morning and you're coming because you know you have the disease of sin. 
the cancer of sin, your stage four cancer of sin. It's terminal. You are this close from hell, and so am I, okay? But you're coming up here, and you're going to touch, you're going to touch Jesus. You're going to touch Jesus, and in that bread and in that wine, if you touch it and with faith access the power of Jesus, it will do what you need, spiritual healing. If Jesus can do that, not if. Since Jesus can do that, he did it on the cross, gave his body and his blood to reverse, reverse the cancer of sin and to block away hell and give you life and health in heaven. He has certainly got the power and the will to help you with whatever ails people and pastor. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep you faithful and persevering and fighting off the crowds and getting close to Jesus to life everlasting.